you brought it up. So I want to bring up one last piece of Vince business and then we'll move on from Vince for a bit. The idea that he might start another country or not company, not company. Maybe he's going to do that too. There, you, yeah, you maybe, maybe. He's going to buy the Island. <laughs> right. Why not? I, um, I gotta say, Eric, I know that, you know, none of us really know. I totally see it. I totally buy that. He is not willing to let this story and this news be the last story of his life. Like, I don't think this is what, cause I mean, let's be honest. I hate that this is the way it is right now. Maybe I don't hate it, but you get where I'm going. That's a phrase people say. If he passed away tomorrow, people would be talking about this most recent news and that would become a, a huge part of his legacy. You got to think he's trying to dig out there on some level at this point, when you're a billionaire, does he need more money? No. I think at this point, this has got to be concerned with legacy. And it feels like maybe I could see him doing something. And, and, and we saw when he was in Saudi earlier this year, he said, this is our home. And we know they've got the world set up over there. I don't know what the inroads are. I don't know what the possibilities are, but with, you know, there being some companies out there that are available, even though they're not listed publicly for sale, you and I both know there are wrestling companies that can be purchased right now today. It feels like there might be a possibility. And Dave Meltzer wrote about that. He says all the key talent he's talking about WWE is under contract. The early losses as a startup would be significant with two major competitors that are established, and he would be going against the most powerful version of WWE that there's been. I would really see it having almost no chance of success. Vince does have the money to bid for anyone, and no matter how much people who privately in the last few cases publicly talk about their distaste for him and how horrified they were on the suit, it's still a business where most of the talent will go to the high bidder or the most stable company but the latter would not be the case. I know we're not making bets on the program. I've seen your buzz cut. I get that. <laughs> if you were a betting man, what would you put the odds on that Vince is going to start another promotion or be involved in wrestling again in another capacity outside of WWE? I, I wouldn't put any money on it. I, I would, I, I don't even gamble, but I'd just go play blackjack in Vegas instead. I, I, I wouldn't put any money on it. Okay. Well, I would, I'm going to put some money on it. So, uh, we're going to bet, uh, a steak. We're going to, uh, we're going to bet a ribeye in Vegas. By, by <laughs> WrestleMania. Yeah. A Vegas steak. There we go. A Vegas steak dinner by, by next WrestleMania. I say Vince is in the wrestling business. Wow. I mean, here's, here's where that would be good news. I, I, I if that were to happen and I really have to shift into fantasy phase right now fantasy gear because i just can't imagine it but if he did can you imagine how much money all of the wrestling do sites are gonna make we're gonna make on youtube i mean <laughs> this is like the gift that keeps on giving if that were to happen you know i just some you know back when we first started this thing you and I talked briefly. We kept, we knew each other, obviously, yeah. beforehand. But that wasn't like a really great experience, at least not on my part. You had a blast. But I had a blast. You did. <laughs> but, you know, one of my concerns was, number one, I didn't think I, think I had much else to say, and I wasn't convinced that, you know, looking back in nostalgia wrestling was quite the powerhouse that you saw, and you were obviously right, not just because of the success of my podcast with you, but all the others as well, including Bruce's and Tony Schiavone's and Jim Ross's and Arne Anderson's and the list goes on, right? I didn't see it. You did. But one of my other concerns, and I expressed it to you, is like, you know, we're going to run out of stuff to talk about. Right. At some point, what are we going to call this? Like, you know, re revisit, rebook 83 weeks from a fantasy booking phase or whatever. But this gift, this gift, it just keeps on giving and I'm so grateful for it. But if, if Vince were to make a move like that, you've got, it's going to be another three years before I can consider retiring. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Well, we're having a lot of fun here on the podcast. Appreciate you guys joining us. I want to give a special shout out to John McCardell who gifted 40 memberships. I can't believe this is real, but he's gifting memberships here to 83 wow. weeks.com. Thanks for joining 
the Eric Bischoff world order. How nice of that is it for John, man? That's awesome. John, right? That's that's awesome, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, this, and this is, I'm, I'm shifting gears here a little bit. Keep me on the tracks because I may go way the fuck off into the weeds just because of you know, a little bit of brain fog. But, you know, being stuck on a plane for 26, 25, 26 hours and having nothing to do but watch movies I've already seen or spend too much time on social media, I opted to spend too much time on social media. And I had a blast. I had so much fun. And I, I mean, some of the people, and obviously I got, a, I had a blast with all the people that are, why are you doing this, old man? You only, you know, you only want to talk hate about AEW because they won't give you a job. All this nonsense. And I had so much fun fucking with those people. I mean, I was laughing like the village idiot on the plane. People looking at me, you know, been on the plane for five hours and I'm giggling. <laughs> because it, the amount of insanity that's taking place on social media and, and the tribalism, I hate to even use that word because it's just so overused now, but yes, everybody knows what I'm saying. You know, people are you know, accusing each other of, you know, creating tribalism. And I'm going, you, you people have lost your shit. This is fun. And for all of you haters out there that are trying your best to bury me, most of the time you suck, by the way, which is, that's one of the things that puts a smile on my face when somebody's really trying to stick it to me. And it's like, what are you for? You know, I look at their profile and figure out if I'm, you know, having too much fun with a 12 year old or what, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to verbally battle, you know, or not verbally, but battle anybody on social media. That's, you know, like 10 years old, but I'm looking at these people and these are adults. These are grown ass people who got pictures of the wife and kids and shit in their, their profile video picture. It's like, it is so much fun. I am having a blast. And if you want to know why I do this, I don't hate anybody. I've told you that before. I want AEW to be successful. I want Tony Khan to be able to go, look what I did. Told you I could. I want it to grow. For the people that are friends of mine in the business, for people who I don't even know in the business, for some of the people that I got to work with, got to work with in Australia, young talent coming up that are so excited and so eager and, and people like Mance Warner who are like this freaking close to being able to make a great living in a business where only about one half of 1% of the people that actually attempt it can do that. I want that to be true for everybody. But if you think I'm not going to express an opinion after spent 30 years of my adult life in the industry and having ex achieved an enormous amount of success, some that nobody's ever been able to not only replicate, no one's ever been able to achieve. Name a promoter in the last 30 years that was able to, maybe 40 years, that's been able to outperform Vince McMahon and WWE when they were at their peak. Well, they're at their peak now, but you know what I mean. Name one. If you can name one, I'll, I'll sit back and shut the fuck up fact is you can't name somebody else who created a brand a storyline out of that brand that has been for the last 20 some odd years probably the most successful merchandise in the marketplace nwo merchandise is still in the top 10 of all wwe merchandise 20 some odd years later and if you can find someone that's achieved that level of success or had that much of an impact on the business i'll shut the fuck up or if you can find somebody that reformatted television and brought live television on a weekly basis to the industry. If somebody did it before me, I'll shut the fuck up. But the fact is, nobody did, nobody has, and nobody will. That's why I have an opinion. And for anybody to think, because I'm not actually in the business, that somehow I shouldn't have an opportunity to, number one, express my opinion, but to number two, do so on one of the most financially success, successful wrestling podcasts out there. Not the most, maybe top five. Conrad, you know better than I do. You spend more time with the numbers. Maybe top 10. I don't care. Financially, very, very successful. And now this YouTube effort that we're putting forth, our YouTube numbers are growing dramatically thanks to Ant Evans and the help and work from everybody else on the Ad Free Shows team or Podcast Heat team. And besides all that, Bucker Feathers, it's just fun. I'm having a great time from my house. I don't have to get in the car and go to work, spend all day in an office doing a job I don't like. I get to work from my treehouse. 40 feet away from my garage. Freaking awesome. 
I get to work with people I want to work with, when I want to work with them, where I want to work with them, and how I want to work with them, and make an extraordinarily good living doing it. That, to me, is freedom. And I'm enjoying the freedom. Plus, y'all make me laugh.